Watch you guys, got another video here for you. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can fix or diagnose a dead computer. Uh, you may not be getting no display on the uh, monitor. You can't get no power to your computer. And uh, we're just gonna go through some steps that you can take to try and resolve this issue. Now, this is a new format that I'm thinking of doing, uh, which is basically uh, me free talking to you uh, rather than you listening to me doing a tutorial sort of based thing and we're going to be talking about stuff that you can do to fix things and uh, it's a little bit more easier for me to free talk but obviously you're going to get a few mistakes with creaking floorboards and uh, the odd uh, mistake from me speaking so that's as long as you're happy with that then that's fine but let's go through some steps that you can take to fix this now depending on whether you've got money to burn or whether you're on a tight uh, budget uh, and you've got an old key computer or a new computer, it's gonna all de depend on uh, different factors of what you've got, okay? So, let's go through some basic things that you can first do, okay? So as a home user, uh, the first few things that I would do is visual. Uh, open up the side panel and then smell inside and see if there's any burning smells that you can smell, i.e. burning from the graphics card, burning from the power supply. They normally let off a, n a nasty odor when they let go and uh, it's the components that are burnt out inside and you normally get a nasty smell. If that is the case, then it's nine times out of 10, it's gonna be down here um, uh, where the power supply is and you're gonna get a nasty smell, okay? So that would normally be a telltale sign there. So let's move on to something else that you can try yourself. So let me just push this back here. I'm gonna push this back so you can see inside a bit more clearer. So what we're looking for here is the power cables from the power supply here. Make sure they're plugged in, okay? Make sure they're right plugged in, pushed in all the way. If you've moved house or uh, someone's had the computer or you've had it so sitting around for a while, they could ease loose. People moved it about and they can uh, uh, shift loose. So make sure they're seated all the way home. Make sure the power uh, one is pushed all the way home as well uh, to make sure that that's working. The next thing that you want to check for if it's an old computer is blown caps, especially around the CPU area here and uh, down around the motherboard, you'll see these little caps here. The more modern ones are sealed and they've got less chance of letting go because they're more quality uh, platinum and gold type uh, caps here nowadays. But on older computers, uh, they used to let go quite a lot. And if they are spewing uh, some white fluid out or they may have dried out inside, then it's time to either replace the board or replace the caps or upgrade your system. So let's move on to what else uh, could go wrong here. Uh, make sure the memory's pushed right home and it's uh, definitely pushed in and inserted correctly. Another cheap fix is replacing the CMOS battery. Uh, if it's an old computer, uh, the system won't boot if you've got a dead CMOS battery and uh, you want to replace that you need to replace there, normally Duracell or something like that, you can replace those, and they've got a life expectancy, depending on the quality, uh, but sometimes 10 plus years. Uh, so that's what I would do first off for cheapness. Uh, another thing that you can do uh, is check your power cable, which is this cable here. Now this is the first thing that I check, and sometimes these break, sometimes people having them in cabinets and, it, and it's bending over like this and this part breaks inside here and you'll get no power. Technician will come to your house, he'll charge you and sit around and he'll charge you an hour's time and he'll say your cable's gone or he may charge you a bit longer and then uh, dress it up a little bit. Sometimes they do, especially if they've had no work and next thing you know, uh, you're getting stung quite a lot of money for a silly little kettle lead, which we call in the UK. Uh, which is probably a couple of pounds or a couple of bucks in the US. So check those out, okay? Now, if you don't have one of these, it might be worth buying one. Uh, if you've got an old, another computer in the house, then take that out and plug it into the computer that's not working and see whether that fires up. Uh, the next cheapest thing uh, that you can do is to check the power switch on the uh, case itself. Now, this is a common issue. Let me just tilt this over just to show you. So I'm not sure whether you can see that, um, but this power switch here, sometimes these break, uh, especially on older computers, the switch lets go, the micro switch breaks, and it's not powering on the computer. So what can you do to fix that or test it? Well, that's pretty straightforward. If you have a reset switch here, which this one does, what I would do um, as a tech, I would go into the computer here, 
and uh, I would look at the area here let me just push that back I would go down to where the connectors go to the motherboard and I would replace the uh, reset switch over to the power switch and use the reset switch as the power switch temporarily to see whether that powers on uh, if it doesn't have a reset switch you can use a screwdriver to jump her across the power switch to see if it bypasses this switch and it will power on the unit if it doesn't work then obviously um, uh, then it's not that that's not the issue uh, it's something else but if it does work then you know the switch is failed and you can either continue using the reset switch as your power switch or you can just buy uh, a new case so that's the uh, basics out of the way which you could try it's not going to cost you a lot of money and uh, I would definitely try those out lights on the motherboard is another sign that you want to look for which is so if you're powering on this um, system look for any activity light on the board there'll be a, like a little light or if there's no light on there there may be numbers coming up from the bias if it's a newer machine see if there's any of that activity does the fan start to spin and then go off does the cpu fan start to spin and then switch off or have you got a closed uh, loop wall cooling system like this uh, this may be a problem there's loads of reasons why uh, things don't power on but if you're getting no power whatsoever to this then it's possibly going to be related to the power supply. So then let's move on to the power supply. So let's go on to something a little bit more juicy, uh, the power supply. All you'd need to do is swap it out uh, with a new one. So that's going to be a bit more costly, uh, but that will be the next step I would take. So go and buy yourself a power supply, pretty much like for like. If you've got a 300 watt power supply in there, which is like an old Dell or something like that, then you may want to uh, check to see whether the power supply is going to fit your system, because sometimes Dell can be a bit weird with some of their uh, power supplies and uh, it won't fit in some cases. So check all those out first. You may want to buy a second hand one on eBay or something like that. I don't know. Whatever your financial um, money's like, I'm not too sure. But basically, Try and get a decent power supply. A lot of people always skimp on power supplies and you'll get people online uh, overselling stuff as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, I watch a lot of YouTube channels and uh, some of these channels are just pumping out stuff with like 1200 watt and 1500 watt power supplies. You don't need that amount of power. I know Jay's Two Cents and Linus Tech Tips do that sort of stuff. And that's because it's interesting for people to watch and they've never seen that sort of power supply before. So it's just, Companies chuck them, chuck them at them for a review and of course they put them into systems that they don't really need to have that in there. You don't need a super power supply to run a system. Uh, you know, best go for something that's got a couple of hundred watts spare uh, just in case you upgrade. And uh, that's pretty much it. And get a decent branded one, gold certified as you can see here, uh, 80 plus bronze certification or silver or, or platinum or whatever it is you wanna go for. Just make sure you get a decent one, okay, with enough power to run what you want to do. Uh, another thing uh, that you once you've tested that out, if you're still getting no joy with that, then you need to determine uh, what else is going on with the system. I would remove any sort of cables from the CD-ROM drive. If you've got a CD-ROM drive up here, I haven't got one, but if you have, then remove all the cables and power to those and any sort of peripherals that are plugged in there that, that can cause problems and then try to power it on. Just in case one of those have let go, I've seen uh, broken CD-ROM drive stopping the system power on or boot up you normally get some sort of display here but it's you know there's tons of reasons why uh, things happen so that will be the first thing and then the next thing you need to get down to is whether the motherboard has failed or the CPU has failed now sometimes the graphics card uh, can let go and it can do some funny stuff and uh, again uh, check your power supply uh, and you feed to the uh, graphics card have you got enough if it's a new build that's another different type of scenario uh, whether you've got enough power uh, to run you to run the graphics cards that you've got maybe you've got two graphics cards in here and you haven't got enough power and it won't work properly you can get that uh, reboot loop where it just starts up and shuts down starts up and shuts down it just hasn't got enough juice to get that going and that's a quite a common thing uh, to happen uh, on some of these builds and that's when you're going to step up to some of them bigger power supplies so that's getting off topic a little bit that's another topic uh, but check your ram and uh, make sure the ram is but if you've got four sticks of ram here 
or two sticks of RAM or whatever it is you've got in your system, take it all out and leave just one stick in there and uh, see what happens. And then change that stick over with the other one and then just keep one stick in at a time until you've gone through all the RAM that you've got in your system and see if it boots. If it suddenly boots, you know you've got a bad stick of RAM and you now know which one it is that's bad and replace it. Uh, that's a pretty uh, easy way to uh, test. Now I see a lot of people talking about testing memory with MemTest and uh, doing this sort of stuff. It takes a long time to run tests on MemTest. You have to run certain cycles and uh, and stuff like that and you would have to run at least eight passes in my opinion to get a really good test result on that and even then you're not sort of 100% really and that could take 24 hours 48 hours depending uh, how much RAM you've got there so swapping out is the quickest and easiest way to test so go start off cheap and then work your way up to the more expensive stuff until you get down to the motherboard and uh, the CPU graphics card See, PC technicians, they'll have a graphics card lying around, they'll have memory lying around that's known good uh, to test, and it won't take them long to test that out, whereas you're trying to do it on a cheap, and uh, it can cause you more money in the long run. So that's another thing. You can get uh, testers for power supplies, and you can put the pin inside uh, the jumpers, and I've showed you how to do that in previous videos. Uh, but personally, um, it's normally uh, left well alone uh, for that sort of thing. I would go and get yourself another power supply and go down that route rather than using the power supply testers. They're all right. And if you want to do that as a cheap option, I will leave an image up on screen, a link in the description so you can purchase one of them. They're probably around about £10, £15. And you can buy one and plug it into this. And if it lights up like a Christmas tree, it normally means the power supply is pretty good. But I have seen intermittent issues where that is lit and up like a Christmas tree and said it's good and it's not good and uh, there's a fault there and there's not enough power going through and you've got issues. Uh, there could be bad caps or all sorts inside here as well depending on how old the system is. So moving on to the next step again, uh, it's very unlikely that the hard drive has failed and you're getting no activity from the motherboard or anything like that. So if it is dead, then you're now going down to the motherboard and the CPU. And uh, unless you've got a bench with a, an identical socket to test the CPU, it's very unlikely uh, that you're gonna be able to test that. Now, they, they, that CPU can fail, but it's unlikely that it has gone. It's more than likely the motherboard uh, that's let go. But I, I have seen CPUs fail before, but on the grand scale of things, it's normally motherboards outweigh uh, CPUs when they fail and it's normally uh, uh, on I can't give you an exact figure but I've fixed so many computers over the years and I would say it's minimal when it comes to CPU failure and massively in favor of the motherboard so you can choose to replace the motherboard if it's an old motherboard ie an old system then do you really want to go down that route uh, do you want to upgrade to a new computer some people are set in their ways, they don't want to let go of their old system. They paid £1,500 for it 10 years ago and they still think it's worth £1,500 when it's worth absolutely nothing. So it's trying to educate people and try to get them to move up and go for something newer. Um, technology's moved on so much nowadays and you can still build systems for a pretty reasonable cost. So it just depends on whether you want to replace the motherboard or go with a new build. It's entirely up to you. You may be able to get a second hand one on eBay or something if you're really tight for cash, uh, but that's pretty much it. And then once you've replaced that, you should be pretty much good to go. Um, so there are the scenarios on how to fix a dead computer. Uh, if you want to see, I wish I could actually show you step by step taking stuff out, but that will be time consuming and it will be difficult to do live and edit and stuff like that. And plus you would need a dead computer in the first place. So that was where, where I'd be started. That's what the sort of scenario where I would sort of try to go down and fix. Uh, the graphics card again, uh, we didn't talk about that too much when the graphics card has failed. Uh, sometimes that can be issues. You can remove the graphics card. If it has onboard graphics and uh, it's on the CPU, uh, then stick a graphics card in, a cheap graphics card and see if it fires up. Um, pretty much uh, that's about it for this one really. They're the steps you can take to get you back up and running. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. 
If you enjoy these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when we upload new videos. And if you like this type of format, then let me know in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure you're going to uh, either like it or dislike it, and you'll let me know either way. But anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Take it easy. Bye for now. Thank you.